Heus, Pueri, Tempus, Doctori Roberto. That's Latin for hey kids. Time for Dr. Bob. Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. I think that's a combination of church Latin and uh, classical Latin. Yes, kind of paltry Latin you're throwing around there, my man, but (laughs) it's a little better than mine, I expect. Yeah, (laughs) I can do pronunciations and that's it. Oh, okay. Not translations, just pronunciations. Well, uh, what are we going to talk about here? Welcome Let's to go- Town Doc. Okay, because you were not here on a Wednesday, let's talk about State of the Union, which was on Tuesday night. I see. Uh, yes. Well, I think uh, there are a number of things we could say about it. I think first and foremost comes to mind Theodore Roosevelt's description of the presidency as a bully pulpit. And uh, if it's used properly, the president can exercise a tremendous amount of influence simply by uh, his statements and his uh, uh, use of uh, speaking opportunities and things of that sort. Uh, From everything I've seen, uh, Trump's speech was pretty well received. In fact, uh, even a lot of the liberal uh, commentators and pundits uh, gave him uh, credit for uh, what he what he had to say. And I think one of the things that was really kind of convincing was when he starts laying out some of the facts and figures in terms of the economy and uh, uh, some of the other things that, the, uh, that have happened under the Trump administration, which he surely is going to take credit for, um, I think... Um, it, uh, it was pretty telling, and when he uh, basically said, as long as I'm president, there's no, not going to be any socialism in this country, and I think... Uh, Bernie kind of squirmed and rolled his eyes and wasn't well, too pleased. Yeah, well, gee, that's a, that's a big problem, and Bernie's not uh, pleased. How about the white dresses? Uh, well, that's all right. The I women's mean, it's, suffrage movement. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, that's what they want to do. It's, uh, and um, so... Uh, I do think, uh, in that sense, if Trump uh, uses his head here and uh, uh, follows, and I would get, I get the impression most of that speech was actually written by somebody, and he followed it uh, reasonably closely. Uh, if he continues to do that, uh, he's going to be awfully, awfully tough to deal with uh, from the Democrat side. What, follow a teleprompter? <laughs> well, follow some kind of written or uh, organized uh, delivery there. Um, and, uh, again, uh, the whole problem of tweets and such, uh, you can keep him away from that to a certain extent. But, on the other hand, um, the uh, uh, other side, uh, namely the Democrats, uh, are d- uh, disintegrating or uh, falling into so much uh, infighting and uh, disarray that if Trump just kind of stays on target there, I think, uh, you know, again, that's a real advantage the president has. The president can take the initiative and focus attention on uh, his proposals. And I believe today is the deadline uh, for some sort of agreement on funding a wall or some sort of uh, barrier across uh, the Southwest there. So, uh, and, and I, there's some sense, and again, who knows, that in fact they are going to come up with some sort of proposal for Trump. Um, and uh, I, I think we should put it this way. Uh, it's to the Democrat, it's to Congress's, let's put it this way, it's to Congress's advantage to work out some sort of deal uh, with the president on this. Now, some of the people in Congress, of course, are so far off to the left that they, there's no way that they're ever going to um, deal with him. But the point is, if you allow the president to go ahead and declare a state of emergency and pour troops down there and build a wall, uh, you're expanding the power of the office of the presidency, I think, far beyond what anybody in Congress would really like to see. And so if Congress is going to be a check on the president, it seems to me they have to work with some sort of compromise um, in mind. And, Will uh, they? 
Yeah, well, I think uh, institutionally, I think it's something far beyond the sort of personal animus against the president. Uh, obviously, Tuesday the night, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, Ms. Pelosi, uh, took a moment to actually shake hands with the president and welcoming to the uh, the House. And so that all tends to kind of, I think, mellow things out a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, it's up, again, it's the, Demo it's the balls in the Democrats' court at this point. But I think it would be unfortunate uh, to allow the president to use this emergency declaration because you got Trump now, who knows who you're going to have later. And the point is, uh, obviously somebody's going to challenge us in court, but given the uh, position of the Supreme Court right now, uh, the chances the Supreme Court uh, going head-to-head -head with the president or that, I think, are pretty minimal. Right now, with Ginsburg out, um, the conservatives have a clear 5-3 to three majority on the Supreme Court. And if anything uh, more serious happens to Ginsburg, they could well end up with a 6-3 majority on the court. Is there so, any precedent on... Um Elderly or sickly Supreme Court justices, or can they stay as long as they want? Any yeah, they can, and that's a, it's, there's some problems there. We could go into some um, issues there. For example, we uh, Justice Greer, back in the 1850s, uh, would uh, break into song while the attorneys were arguing in front of the court, and he had this really uh, kind of uh, disgusting habit of drooling all over his robe and in those days they didn't have dry cleaners so you can imagine how that worked so they finally got uh, Justice Holmes or not Justice Holmes Justice Field who was new on the court to go in and say hey buddy it's time you step down and Greer did and later when Justice Holmes was on the court into his 90s uh, he would break uh, he would fall asleep during the uh, our old argument, and at one time he woke up and they were still arguing. He, he utters an obscenity of sorts, goes back to sleep. Um, and Justice Hughes went out, uh, Chief Justice Hughes went out to visit with him and said something about how age is creeping up on us all. And uh, Holmes immediately reached up to his shelf, pulled off a form for resignation, and, and resigned. No problem there. But the real problem was. Uh, Douglas, William O. Douglas, one of the gung-ho womanizers on the court, uh, what, married four or five times. I think he, what, he left his wife of 20, I think when he died his wife was 22. Yeah, but at any rate, uh, he refused to leave. And they had him all tubed up and brought him in in a wheelchair. And uh, Chief Justice... Uh, Berger, to his credit, went way out of his way uh, in that respect. But, you know, Douglas just wanted to be the longest-serving member of the court. And I guess he pulled that off, although he, I think he, at best we'd give him an asterisk with that. Uh, so she can, you know, unless she, well, unless things are totally out of uh, control there, um, there's nothing you can do. And you get a situation where, you know, she ended up in a, uh, state where she was semi-conscious or something of that sort, I think you have to have a resignation. I don't think, uh, well, I guess they can actually impeach him and remove him, but th that has never been successful as a Supreme Court judge. So it's a, you know, it is a, it's a quandary. It's a quandary, Brian. Yes, no? Dr. Bob. Can we talk about your former student, quoting Republican Congressman Tom Reed? Yes, what a fine young man. <clears throat> Well, uh, Reed uh, put out on his um, um, Reed.house.gov page that the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus is uh, working on a bipartisan infrastructure plan. And it says that uh, the mission is to find bipartisan solutions to the nation's most pressing issues. Drastic improvement uh, to the infrastructure tops the list. Yes. Well, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, we've got to get some action here out of this Congress and get some movement on some of these things that really need to be done. And this kind of petty bickering, which is all we're doing here in terms of uh, 
this back and forth, and uh, the 35 people run and think they're going to run for the presidency on the Democrat side don't help it a bit. Um, and uh, I, I, I think, you know, what Trump has to do is, first of all, I think help something uh, like the Problem Solvers Caucus and get infrastructure going. I mean, he was able in his State of the Union message to just lay out again and again and again things that he's done and intends to do to do uh, as president. Um, and the Democrats, I mean, they're just making total fools of themselves. I see where uh, Ms. Uh, Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren now, uh, they've discovered a, a card that she filled out to be admitted to the Texas bar in which she listed herself as Native American. I mean, come on. Uh, this, is just, uh, this is just weird. Um, now, earlier this week, uh, Congressman Tom Reed was in a uh, back and forth there online in a battle. I think it was a Twitter battle more than a battle of the headlines. Uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo first came out and said the Washington Republicans' salt changes, state and local tax deduction changes, are responsible for income taxes uh, going way down in December. Then Congressman Reed shot back that Cuomo was to blame for thousands and thousands of people leaving New York yes. State for other states. Right. And later in the week, President Trump met with upstate reporters, and Trump said uh, that uh, Albany Democrats are rotten to the upstate Republican voters, the average person, yeah. and uh, Trump encouraged the, those people in upstate who are conservative to leave the state for better places. <laughs> well, that didn't go too well with Rich Eisner, P.D. Cuomo's press spokesman, who put out a statement saying that uh, Trump is playing favorites to Republican millionaires and corporations. In upstate New York? Uh, in other are, states. Are we, in, in the, he said in the say, Republican states. Are we flooded with billionaires and millionaires here in upstate New York? Well, I don't think so. Uh, no. What do you uh, think of it all? Hey, what? What do you make of it all? Well, I think uh, uh, Cuomo and uh, the power structure in Albany right now is clearly biased against upstate New York. Now, I'll give Hochul some credit. I mean, she is from Erie County, but there's only, you know, so much she can do in her position. Uh, no, it's, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, serious disaster here in upstate New York. And uh, uh, the fact is there's a, a huge immigration away out of the state. And uh, Cuomo's policies... Uh, have encouraged that. Um, so I, I don't see how he can be blaming. Uh, uh, well, he's got to find somebody to blame, I guess, what it comes down to. And what's interesting is he was talking about, what, a two point, two point some billion uh, shortfall there on revenue and what a terrible said. I think he said it was something like a heart attack. Well, just keep pouring more money into these um projects of one sort or another and uh, you know where's that money coming from i i don't know some of it's not there anymore i guess Can no i i think it's uh uh it's sad uh, and it, it hurts uh, new upstate new york uh, pretty badly now you know uh, i think somebody's been pushing uh separating upstate new york from uh downstate and uh, mr nojay uh, was a big fan of that and pointed out to me one time that um, upstate New York costs uh, the New York City area something like six or eight billion dollars a year that they have to pour into the upstate because uh, they're, they've got the money and you know they're financing a lot of things that the state has to finance upstate. So we cost them quite a bit of money. It's just too bad they wouldn't let the upstate uh, move out and uh, get out from under a lot of this regulation because I think we could do a lot of things. Places like Rochester, they've got all kinds of small businesses and things that could get started. But uh, it's amazing how oppressive the state regulation can be. Going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Dr. Bob in just a moment.
Did you know that the IRS is getting more aggressive these days and they're using private agencies to track you down? Don't wait. If you owe more than $10,000, take advantage of the Fresh Start Initiative, a program in place that can help you now. You can save thousands and possibly have your taxes forgiven. Call the Tax Representation Helpline now about the Fresh Start program. If you qualify, it will stop the IRS collection agencies from coming after you within 24 hours. Get the break you deserve and call about the Fresh Start Initiative now. Call the Tax Representation Hotline now at 800-295-1046. Hurry or it will just get worse. Let Tax Representation stop the IRS from targeting you within 24 hours. Call the hotline now at 800-295-1046. That's 800-295-1046. There is help for those of you who owe $10,000 or more, but it's important that you take action before these programs change. Call the special tax representation hotline now at 800-295-1046. 800-295-1046. Back with Dr. Robert oh. A. Heinemann. Thank you, Brian. Um, on the topic of abortion, uh, abortion, some statements were put out by both Congressman Reed and Governor Andrew Cuomo. Governor Cuomo came out against President Trump talking about abortion and what, he, and what Trump said, what the president said there in the State of the Union on Tuesday night. And um, Reid also put out a statement. Reid says, quote, The extremists in Albany and Governor Cuomo would like you to think that the New York State abortion bill is about solidifying the Roe v. Wade decision, and anyone who's against this bill could never be pro-choice. Reid says, This could not be further from the truth. Reid says, The ability to kill a living Living, breathing baby at birth for reasons not even determined by a licensed doctor is extreme and does not reflect the Supreme Court's landmark decision on abortion. Well, uh, I don't know if it reflects uh, the Supreme Court's decision. He uh, says it does not. I know. I understand that. Oh, okay. okay. I, I might uh, differ Sorry, with him ahead. on that a bit. Um, but um, I think he's correct. And when Cuomo says all we're doing is codifying Roe v. Wade, no, no. You're extending Roe v. Wade way beyond what Justice Blackman ever intended. Uh, but Roe v. Wade does allow uh, states to go out and uh, abort, uh, you know, the day before uh, uh, delivery in, in birth. I mean, it's, 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 it's a tragic, tragic thing. And, uh, um, but, uh, you know, a lot of states uh, prohibit that. And uh, the question is, at what point do you have an undue burden on the woman's? That's, that's the law as we look at it now. Um, but to, to push it that far, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just sick. And the governor of Virginia, uh, who I believe is a doctor, uh, has pushed it even farther. And I think it's, frankly, even women who are pro-choice, and I've had them say the same thing to me, you know, once you're in your seventh or eighth month uh, and then decide to abort, uh, why, would, why would you do it? Now, I can understand if it threatens a woman's health seriously or if the fetus is so badly deformed that it's just not worth uh, delivering. I mean, there are cases like that. But uh, other than that, to just decide that uh, you uh, want to uh, abort the, the fetus, the child, uh, I mean, that women just shake their head at that. So yeah. I think they've gone way over the edge there. And of course, there are uh, some pro-choice people out there that you'll never satisfying uh, period. Well, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing because Governor Andrew Cuomo, and he's not the only one that sa said this. I've seen a lot of other people saying this, too. Uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo said on Wednesday, I'm reading from TheHill.com, that Cuomo says, President Trump spread lies about New York State's recent legislation to expand abortion. Cuomo wrote in an op-ed from the New York Times that Trump and the religious light have right have pushed misleading claims about the RHA, the Reproductive Health Act with the ultimate goal of outlawing all legal abortion. Trump and the religious right are spreading falsehoods with the goal of inflaming their base, Cuomo said. I've seen similar things, uh, the, uh, people posting links to various uh, websites uh, that, that deny that uh, what um, 
Uh, Congressman Tom Reed says, is the case that it's an abo- or Assemblyman Phil Palmasano that it's a... Th- these people are saying, and Governor Cuomo are saying, that it's not an abortion expansion at all. What do you say to that? Well, it's pushing the, uh, the abortion uh, rights issue right to the very, very uh, end. That's what is expanding it as far as you can. Uh, so... Uh, the uh, but the point uh, in New York State, as I understand it, was, and again I, I don't know we don't need to spend too much time on this, but uh, uh, the law provided that if you attack a, wo- a pregnant woman and kill the fetus, that was a homicide. That you could be prosecuted for a homicide, and that was removed uh, from the law by this recent uh, changes in the abortion law in New York State, uh, and. Uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, the point is, the point I made before was the pro-choice women are concerned that uh, you're denying them their right, a woman or right, whether to deliver or not deliver, have a baby, not have a baby. Well, in the case of the law, the way it was written, uh, you're dealing with a woman who clearly wanted to have a baby, and somebody attacks her and kills the fetus. That runs directly contrary, it seems to me, to what these pro-choice people are saying, you're clearly denying a woman the right to uh, have a baby by killing the fetus by assaulting her. Now that's been removed from the law. Now you can surely still be prosecuted for assault, don't get me, but uh, it uh, has made it a lot, uh, well, it's diluted uh, the woman's choice in that situation. I don't think there's any question about it. So uh, uh, go back and forth on this. I, I think it's something that uh, Cuomo's going to, I mean, the Democrats, and I, again, I don't think all the Democrats agree with this by any means, uh, but the, some of these cases have gone way, way over the edge. Does this help or hurt Cuomo in a presidential run? I don't think it helps him, no. What about uh, Joel Rigo for our last topic? Assembly, former Assemblyman Joel Rigo's pleaded not guilty in that case. If I was on the Rigo defense team, I would say the guy was out of it and sickly and not mentally with it during the campaign and when this incident happened what what do you, what would you, would you do that too uh, i'll i'll have to defer to your legal acumen there uh, yeah. brian <laughs> I, i'm not getting in the middle of that all i can say is i think there's a lot more a lot more to this case than uh mr arrigo and uh so i think there are a lot of people right now up in the monroe county area pretty nervous all right, with that, we got to leave it, Dr. Bob. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me, Brian. Did you like my lat there at the beginning? Uh, I can't comment on that one way or another. <laughs>